got a message. <laughs> Praise God. It's actually about death. It's called life exchange. Everyone say, I need to exchange my life. I didn't say your wife. I said the life. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Is that hot in here or what? Somebody's hot. Hallelujah. I got a witness. <laughs> Hallelujah, I got hot flashes. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. And everybody knows things are crazy. They're getting worse out there, aren't they? I love it, though. Things are getting worse because darkness is being exposed and light's penetrating every area. They're kicking butt. They just don't know it yet. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 3, verse 1. Let's speak it together, please. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Are we in the last days? Man, if you don't know we're in the last days, you need deliverance. For men will be lovers of them. What? In other words, they love their lives. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control or control over their flesh, control over self. Some of them have control over their mouth. Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people turn away. Be careful. Why? Because bad company corrupts good habits. Amen? These are lovers of worldly, carnal, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, lust of self, with no desire to exchange for a new life. They have no desire to exchange for a new life. See, it's, it's not how, so many people are always looking at how to begin a new life. And the first thing that needs to come is to an end of a life. Amen? And, and, and sometimes we need to focus because so many times we're not getting the fullness of the new life because we're still bringing in some of the things from the old. We haven't come to the death of all the things of the old. In other words, we're not able to exchange life yet. There's the fullness that God has for us. It's not how you begin the new life. It's how you end the old life. Amen? Mark 4, verse 13. Then Jesus said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves. And so they endure only for a time. And afterward, when tri tribulation or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they what? They stumble. Now, these are the ones sown on among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the what? Cares of this world. The cares of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the desires for other things and entering in and choke the word and it becomes what? Unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on ground. Those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit some 30 fold, 60 and some 100 fold. You know there's a difference between hearing and listening. Amen. When a person hears they want to put it into practice. When a person listens they just look at you and go yeah, 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 yeah. They just can't wait for you to stop. They're just agreeing with you no matter what. Man, they'll look to you face to face and lie to your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Amen? That's when a person's listening. But when you hear, because that's what everything in the Scripture in the book of Revelation says, those who have an ear, let them hear. So when they hear, that means they're going to take it and partake of it, put it in their spirit, and practice it. They're not going to just, oh, hallelujah. There's no root no, and the cares of this world, material and emotional attachments of the world chokes. And they become unfruitful. They're not able to cut loose from the end of the old life. So they can get a new life. You know, there was a, I want you to picture something. And I saw this, it was pretty wild, uh, and, and, it, and, it, and it just quickened me. That, and there was this plane that took off, and it was a passenger plane, and it was headed towards over to, uh, overseas, and it was filled. There was about three or 400 people in it. And while they were flying, um, an explosion happened. And about six or eight rows of seats blew right out, and it was over the sea. And the pilots, they called in, and they were trying to control everything. And then, and they said that somebody had, they, they figured a bomb blew off. And it blow, blew up on the side of the plane. Like I said, eight, eight rows or ten rows or six rows, whatever it was. And so they, uh, their systems began to fail, and they lost oxygen. So they had to come down quickly so they can get to an altitude where they could breathe. And then one of the engines went out, another engine went out. I mean, they were in dire straits. And the pilot phoned in and shared what had happened, and they believed it was a bomb. And they had to turn around, and they came back. And anyways, they landed. And, uh, you know, there were many people injured and so forth. But when they landed, they found out that a cargo hatch door blew open. It wasn't a bomb. Now, I, I share this with you because think about all the passengers that were affected from that flight, from that moment. And, and think about the blame that they were thinking about. Why didn't they close that and double check that cargo and all the other stuff? Isn't it the same? In other words, and they can carry that for such a long time. They could carry that fear. They could carry that anger. They could carry that. They can carry it for a long time and never come to the end of it. And it will affect them the rest of their life unless they come to the end of it. See, you can't get a new life without coming to the end of it, the old one. And everything in, in our new life, we can't carry it unless it's pertaining to Christ. In other words, we can carry our experiences of good how things turned out, the goodness of God. But we don't carry the bad things into the present anymore. You can't carry all of the corruptible garbage and contamination into the new life. Because then that new life will never have its opportunity to mature and grow. And that's why the Bible says, come out from among them and don't touch things that are unclean. Amen? Be separate. And I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters. So in all this, again, God is trying to bring us into the place where there is a true life exchange and a continuous life exchange. You know, when you became a believer, that's a, it's not a one-time moment. It's a continuous moment. Because the word believe means to what? Follow. Amen? I mean, you can't believe one day and decide the next day you ain't believing. But how many people fall into that place? Because they're still bringing the old into the new. And it contaminates it. We are entering a whole, this, the world will never be the same. Amen? We're entering a whole new season, a whole new, a whole new reality. The old reality is going to begin to melt away. Banking systems, everything is going to begin to melt away. And we are entering a whole new reality. And you cannot change the new reality we're entering in. And you don't want to bring the old reality into a new one. When God says shift, he means shift. Amen? 
Philippians 3 and verse 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Now, the circumcision means we are those who are, have covenant. We are children that have a covenant with the Lord. Amen. That's what circumcision is about. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal perse persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also counted all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, <clears throat> for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. In other words, when he say counted the loss, he's given up the old life. <clears throat> but he says all things. Paul came to a place where he was able to not bring anything more. He came to an end of that old life. And he was able to exchange it for that new one. Yet, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I suffer the loss of all things. And count them as rubbish that I may what? Gain Christ, gain that new life. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may gain to the resurrection from the dead. Loss of all things, count them, he see, in other words, he sees them as rubbish. Nothing can be compared for the truth that he has gained in this new life. You know what? People will sell their new life for materialism. They sell their new life for a moment of pleasure. They sell out. Because they've never come to the end. Why do they sell out? Because they've never come to the end of it. Their enemy still plays with them. Their enemy still has access. That's why it's important that you and I shut all doors of our past. Everything. Everything must be brought to light no matter what it is. And cut loose and severed. All these emotional tantrums and all people, places, and things, and all the material, and all, you know, every time when I, I run into people and stuff, man, I used to, and I used to, and I used to have this, and I used to have that, who cares? Count it all gone. Well, I used to, it doesn't matter what you used to. Amen? It matters what you are doing now. And again, we want to begin to continue to live from the future, amen, to the present, and live from the promises of God. Nothing else. Not how we feel. Not how we think. Not what the doctor says. Amen. It doesn't matter. Now God uses anybody, can he? He can use anyone. He can even use a doctor. <laughs> yeah. But I can tell you that in God using anything... What is released is when you come to the end. Because when you're in it, he's not. <laughs> and we have to find that the hard way. Why do people struggle? Why do they struggle? Well, because they're not at the end of themselves yet. They're still fighting for that part of the old to keep it in the present. That's why they struggle. Why do people get offended? Because there's still a part of the old that's still not disconnected and it's brought into the present. Some people have no idea that half of the old is still with them. And you got to remember something. The old is still in the flesh. 
But the Bible says if you're led by the Spirit of God, your flesh is crucified. So we battle spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Amen? There's a battle all around us. But if you're dead to the old, everything is being new. You will be able to overcome everything. You won't fear. You'll trust. You won't whine. You'll stay drunk. Amen? You won't look back, right, and turn to stone. <laughs> You'll go forward. Because you know the word of God. You're living from the word that all things work to the good. Yes, Lord, I made a mistake. I repent. Thank you. It's done and over with. Now let's go forward. Because of God before you, who can be against you. Amen? So in this, we've got to come to that place where Everything that has been connected to us must be disconnected. So to, now, only God can reconnect things. Amen? There are things that have been reconnected from my past, like my wife, you know. That was a good thing. I mean, divorced three years and then remarried. God reconnected us. But there are things that God can reconnect. He can restore things. But see, when he restores it, he guarantees it. When we try to restore it, <laughs> ain't no guarantee of nothing. But Lord, you promised. Yeah, I know, but it ain't for me. People, Lord, thank you for this vehicle. He said, I didn't bless you with that. Now you got to take care of it. And it becomes a loveman, a junk, and whatever else. But when God blesses you with something, it's different. But again, it's when we're not in it that he is. It's when our hands are not in it, his hand's in it. You know, we, call in, we fall into that place of fear and worry and so forth. What people are going to think of us. Who cares what people think of you? It's what he thinks of you. Amen? Think about the woman with the issue of blood. She didn't care what people thought about her. She got her on her hands and knees, crawled, probably stepped on and everything else. Everybody was trying to touch Jesus. She snuck right through. She wasn't concerned what anybody thought. <laughs> she said, you know what, man? I know that if I touch his hem, it's over with. See, she was actually healed before she touched his hem. But to her, it was a point of contact. And that point of contact, the Lord said, man, who touched me? And they were like, what do you mean, Lord? There's about 50 people around you. But there was one. One that came to the end of herself and touched his hem and drew, and drew the anointing from him. Amen? Oh, happy days. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. Life exchange. You know, again, we've, we've talked about the exchange process. Without exchange, you know, you know, there's no change. Amen. In verse 18, let's speak it together. For the message of the cross is what? Foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Now, now, now why is it foolish to those who are perishing? The message of the cross, because the message of the cross is death. It's death to your old. Does everybody get it? See, they, people can't understand that. When you tell somebody, man, you need to die to yourself, they're like, what? Remember, we have a saying here, it's a good day to die to yourself. So what the message of the cross is about Jesus dying on the cross. It was death to bring life. He had to come to the end of himself to bring new life. Amen. So the message of the cross is to bring the end of old to bring new. But it's foolish to those who are perishing. Why? Because they can't come to the end of themselves. The, the ones that we just read in 2 Timothy 3. Verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? 
Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, and it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Christ crucified, the old crucified, to bring the what? New. A stumbling block to the Greeks and foolishness. But those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Now this is powerful because, you know, B.C., before Christ in our lives, we're out there. We were heathens. Whatever we did, God's eyes were on us. Of course, every demon in hell was on us too. But through that process when God said, okay, it's time to come out of darkness. See, we were hidden in darkness and don't even realize it. That's where God had us hidden. We cried out, Lord, help, 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 help. God, help, help, help. And there was no answer. The answer came on his time. All of a sudden, he pulled us out of darkness. He said, now I'm going to turn you into one of my trophies. But you've got to cooperate, whatever I do. When I put you in a fire, don't run. When I put you on the potter's wheel, don't jump off. Amen? And you're going to learn suffering. You're going to learn it. Why? Because you're going to learn from all the sufferings and all the things you're going through. Why? Because I'm going to bring you to the end of you so I can put me in you. Does everybody get that? See, this is where the fight is, because it's an inner fight, you know. I mean, yeah, we got a spiritual battles, we got demonic activity and so forth, but those desires that the enemy constantly is pushing, and that area of fear where people don't realize fear, it's always for trying to protect self, because pride protects self. So pride is a protector of the old man, fear is a protector of pride. Amen? John 12. What the Spirit is saying is recognize these things. Recognize these things. Recognize those things that pop up that is from the past. Recognize it. And if you don't take care of it, it's going to overtake you. And it will spread. John 12, 24. Everybody there? Anybody there? Good. Let's speak it. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and does what? Dies. It remains alone. But if it dies, it produces what? Hello, much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life in this world will what? Keep it for what? Eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. <laughs> my father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come for this hour. Why? He was coming to the end of himself. Every area. we got to remember, he was born in this world, was raised by mom and dad and so forth, and even though he drifted a little bit when he was about 12 and was being about his father's business, and mama had to come and grab him by the ear, come on, son, I know you're Jesus, I know you're God, but it ain't time yet. There's still some other things you got to learn about this worldly captivity, learning how to live in the matrix. <laughs> he was the only escape for us, right? He was the one who was going to allow us to escape. Old must die. 
That's what he's talking about. So Jesus, even he had to come. That's why he had to go pray three times, right? But he was actually clearing out every chamber of the tabernacle. That's when he was praying every time. So when you're struggling, just tell yourself it's a good day to die. <laughs> to yourself. And just know there's something still there that's trying to be either pushed into the present from the old or it's opened. Amen? And we want to expose it. Again, everything's about recognizing. Luke 21, 34. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and cares of this life. And the day come on you, what? Unexpectedly. For it come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. The cares of this life. You know, you, you have to step back and think about, can you give everything up that you have? If Jesus said, give it all up, would you struggle, fight, be sorrowful? Look at, if he tells you to give everything all up, it means there's more. He's saying, come on, man, let's trade in the old for the new. Praise God. I can't wait for him to tell me to give away that truck. And a few other things. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of what? Death. Even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and those on heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Again, humble. You know, pride will always promote the old. It's a promoter of the old. It's a promoter of the old life. And even when you get a new life, you can bring in pride and it can contaminate it, the new life. Jesus humbled and became obedient to the death of the cross. The cross is a place of life exchange. What's the cross? A place of what? Life exchange. Death to old. <clears throat> Luke chapter 9, 23. Then Jesus said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Take up his cross daily. Not when he feels like it. And then follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? Whoever is ashamed of me and my word, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his father's and the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Very powerful. Again, we come to that place where we're denying ourselves. Again, that's why we always say it's a good day to die to yourself. You know, I, I want to repeat that area to when you struggle in something, it is significant to acknowledge, recognize this. Don't just pass it around or stick it under a rug. Oh, it will just go away. No, it will come back again. It will hound you, it will attack you, it will, it will persecute you. It will do everything it can until it's got further possession. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Uh, James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie again against the truth. Now, this is a powerful scripture because what's he doing is he's exposing something that someone's brought and carried into the new and not come to the end. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For there's envy and self-seeking exists, confusion, and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Again, bitter envy, self-seeking, offense is a carrier from the old, and it's contaminating the new. It doesn't mean that you won't be offended, but you'll sense it coming. You'll know, and you won't react to it. You'll respond to it by no. Somebody get it? Same thing with offense. Fear, anxiety, stress, all of these things is no longer part of the new life. I never see Jesus freak out. I never saw Jesus. Now, the only, I mean, he responded, and he responded in boldness. Come out and name it, you know, come out, whatever, be healed, boldness. But he never freaked out. Oh, man. No. Oh, dear God. He never, he never freaked out on anything. So if we carry his spirit, and we allow his spirit to yield, and we're yielding to him, and he's leading us, then we would be, our conduct would be the same way. In fact, you might be in your mirror more often and going, come out. Hello? Romans 6. You know, think about when a, a, a child, I mean, we always tell us all, all the kids, if they fall and hurt themselves on a bike, come on, quick, get up, so what? Or else it may take you longer to get back on that bike. What are they trying to do? Come to the end of something. Come on, it's just a moment. Come on, get rid of it. Come on, get back on that bike. Amen? It's the same thing. Not bringing anything from the old into the new. Romans 6, verse 1. Hallelujah. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus, uh, to Christ Jesus, were baptized into his what? Death. Therefore, we were buried with him through the baptism in death, into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, so by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has what? Died. Mm. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be what? To be what? Dead. Indeed, to sin. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body 
that you should obey it in its lust. Wow. We are dead, and we should recognize this all the time. That's why everything we should be looking at is almost like going through a curtain and leaving everything from behind. Every day. The only thing you're bringing with you from that day is what's of God. Everything else that's not of God, you leave behind. Every day. Boom, boom. Every day you walk through that curtain and you leave everything else behind. Whatever it is. Fear, anxiety, stress, offense, bitterness, whatever it is. Who people will call, labels, things that you were named. People you hurt. Let it go behind. People that hurt you, let it go behind. It doesn't matter. You can't, anything that you bring into the present will torment you. It will hinder you. And you will not be able to have the fullness of exchange of life. And you want to walk in peace, joy, and righteousness in the new life. The joy of the salvation. The presence of God. Well, the presence of God in everything that we do. The joy. Joy. The Bible says that a joyful heart is what? Good medicine. Even if you do get sick, you don't have to bring that miserable thing into the present and the new. Amen? You can still stay joyful. What's the worst thing that can happen to you? You go home. What the heck? Hallelujah. You know? <laughs> well, let's go to 1 Peter 5. In verse 6. Therefore, what? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That means submit. Amen. Humble yourself. Submit. Surrender. Don't go in survival. Surrender. Survival is always a part of the old. Always. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all of your care upon him, for he cares for you. Some people are still only casting a few things and still holding on to the rest and trying to figure it out themselves. And then they're bringing it into the new and contaminated. He says, be sober, be vigilant. That means be what? Awake and consistent. Amen? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a rain lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. Amen? He's trying to torment. He's trying. Man, he's looking for any open door and anything that you can give to him. Don't give him excuses. <laughs> don't make a way for him. Don't pet his stuff. Expose it and get rid of it. Shut the door in his face. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. You, therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace. What's grace mean? It's God's what? Plan of escape. It's not God's unmerited favor. You earn God's trust. You earn his favor. Amen. He just doesn't give the keys to everybody, you know. Here, take my car. You're only 12. You've never driven in your life. No problem. And that's how people think, oh, God, but I'm a born-again Christian. I should have this, this, and that. He said, right, you'd kill yourself and everybody else. You earn God's favor. Grace is God's plan. So when you participate with grace, you're doing his plan. Amen? That's why we're saved by grace. Not by a flip of a coin or because you did something real good. You're saved because you're cooperating with his plan. Amen? I'm so tired of hearing that. I've been saved by grace, but I can still sleep, drink, party, do whatever I want. That ain't grace, homie. That's stupidity. And that's not the doctrine of my father. That's from the below father. Hallelujah. Ticks me off when I hear that, man. You know, you want to slap the hell of someone and make room for heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach 
others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hello. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life. Why? Because he's dead. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Also, if anyone competes in athletics, he has not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules. God's got laws and rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partic participate in the crop. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things things for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he'll deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of, of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Psalm 119, verse 137. Righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. Your testimonies which you have commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And your law is truth. Look at this next verse. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me. Yet your commandments are my delight. So he's burned through it. The righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall what? Live. Wow. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me. Yet your words of promise are my delight. I'm going to close at James chapter 1 and verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, when you are challenged, when the old comes up and you want to get rid of it, man. When you're struggling, amen. Why are you struggling? Because something from the old's coming in. Or trying to knock at your door. Amen. Count it all joy. Laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. It doesn't say if you fall into various trials. It says when. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience or what? Endurance. But let the patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete. Lacking nothing. Everyone say I'm lacking nothing. If you lack, then you ought to be joyful. You know, joyful. Just count it all joy. No matter what's going on, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what your neighbor says. Hello? It doesn't matter what your boss says. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It matters what God says. We stand on what we live out of the truth. It doesn't matter how you feel. Hello? If you're miserable, laugh it through. Lift your hands to heaven and ask the Lord fill you with the Holy Spirit, fresh oil, and new wine. Go into your closet and don't come out until you change. Amen? And you can change while you're in the closet, too. You know, you get his clothes in there. So you can come out a new spirit, soul, body, and clothes. Praise God. That's the beauty of going to your closet. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and only in your presence is joy. 
we thank you. So, Lord, help us come to the end of ourselves so that we can get that full exchange all the time. We want to exchange our life for your life every day. Lord. We don't want to bring anything of the old into the new. No worries, no concerns, no nothing, knowing that you got it all. Keeping us out of the word of the last say, giving you the opportunity for the last say. So, Lord, we thank you. I ask you to protect everyone and visit us in dreams and visions. They expose those things that we need to shut and end of the old so we can step into the new with you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.